Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Frank Heffern, and I'm a representative like Donna and like Eileen, who did not identify herself. Uh, uh, two points. One, I, I really want to echo what Arnie says about the Michelle Alexander book, uh, The New Jim Crow, and, uh, and uh, Richard emphasized it too. I just want to tell you that the reason for the title. Her theory is we had slavery. We got rid of slavery. We put in Jim Crow. We got rid of Jim Crow. Now we have mass incarceration of minorities. And it's really a powerful book. And Richard also mentioned the fact that so many people in Louisiana are part of the uh, prison system that it affects voting. Not just the ones who are in prison, the ones who got out of prison. They can't vote either. Mm -hmm. right. And also they can't get jobs either. They can't support a woman who's taking care of their babies. They can't do anything really, or there's so many things they can't do. So again, it's Michelle Alexander, the new Jim Crow, mass incarceration in an age of uh, color blindness. And then my second point is this privatization is the scariest thing, and I didn't realize how quickly it could come upon us and how, how it could be done without legislative action. And then, let's say we solve this problem. Let's not forget about it. It's, it's atrocious how many people in our country are in prison. And yeah. We just, we compare so badly to the rest of the civilized world. I think we're still, civilized. still civilized per capita in the world. In the world. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So I don't know whether we should compare ourselves to a civilized world. <laughs> so anyways. And on your first point, uh, it's scary to think, and, and I'm not in the business of, of uh, you know, propagating fear, <laughs> but uh, if there's a, pri a private prison in some area that uh, is guaranteed to have, you know, 100% occupancy or something, which will spur the local police force to arrest uh, as many people as they can, can to fill that place up. Uh, who's to say that uh, human nature doesn't enter the picture and the police force decides to concentrate on Democrats or women or whoever? You know what I mean? It just opens up the just this Pandora's box, it seems to be. It's, you know, yes. Um, I just didn't want people to leave here tonight being as stupid as I was and forgetting that bills were mentioned earlier. Arnie, you have one that's being heard on the Thursday. 7th. And you mentioned a couple coming in the pipeline, maybe from the Senate. I haven't heard of those. But in the House. Is it from the House? Yeah. Okay. So, so if you go on prisonwatch.org, or get on Arnie's email list, you can find out when this legislation is being heard because you are very powerful. There is nothing more powerful in a public hearing than to have the public show up. And I can't emphasize that enough. That is the beauty of our system. There is no drawer, there is no back room, there is no hiding legislation. Once it's in the pipeline, and there are ones in the pipeline, they get a public hearing. You can make the biggest difference of anybody in this room. Not Frank or Eileen or me or is Chris Munn still here from Hampton? <coughs> he was here earlier. Not us representatives. It's you showing up and testifying and letting legislators know what you feel. That is the, the difference between doing something about this and not. And I didn't want you to leave feeling there was nothing you can do. So please get on their list so you know when those hearings are. Thank you. Thanks. I'm just standing up to see if there's anyone in the back who has a question. Well, just, uh, excuse me. Just a quick rejoinder to Arnie's uh, question. He's saying, can we afford uh, the prison system? By example, is New Hampshire richer, a wealthier state than Mississippi? Yes. 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 But Mississippi has a more humane approach to solitary confinement than New Hampshire. And there's another bill that you'll find coming up soon for a hearing, which is to limit 
what we see in New Hampshire is the overuse of solitary confinement for just ordinary in-prison infractions, not as it was designed for the worst of the worst. So please look for that as well. Thank you. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to uh, suggest that how come they don't uh, consider a bracelet program that would save the state a lot of money? And then the person would have to pay for it. <laughs> that, um, that's part of the community corrections model, is that the person would have a bracelet. In fact, the folks, um, so we have a member of the, the union, um, uh, Matt O'Connor, <coughs> who works, um, who was the first person who was put on the community corrections. He was the only person doing community corrections in Belknap County. Um, Everybody had an ankle bracelet that was out on there, and he said he knew better where they were in the community with the bracelet than he did when they were in the in in the uh, incarcerated in the prison. They could empty up huh? practically if they, because half of them, I don't know how many stand there now, until they But look at all the money they could save with that. Yeah. Um, you, I, I commend when somebody mentioned that most something, you know, that's, a, that's another thing we've tried to be creative with um, in the union. I just went back working to the local that I just went back to working with um, represent security officers and, um, you know, the folks that you see dressed up nicely at the uh, office building on your way in usually are making $9 an hour or less. Um, so we organized 5,000 of those folks several years ago, and we did it in conjunction with churches and community organizations um, in the Boston area. And what it, it, it's not just limited to unions, but to think outside of the box for any organization, um, you know, that that can affect policy. So what we did with our union contract when we negotiated it was that we we required the employers. Um, to send their managers through a, a criminal records um, literacy course. So that, because what happens is you get a, you get a Corey report and just because somebody had one period, they toss them in the bucket and they don't, they don't hire them. They don't realize that, you know, it's, it's a minor infraction or, or something like that. They, they just throw it in the bucket. So this would teach people uh, they're terribly difficult reports to read. Um, they're all coded and they don't, you know, it's, it's abbreviated and they're printed out on horrible paper. And, um, but they, uh, they're very hard to read, so uh, it was part of the union contract that the managers be trained on how, and the hiring uh, officers be trained on how to read these reports so that they weren't tossing everybody in the bucket and they were, you know, um, limiting who they, they parsed out for, um, for hiring, and then we ended up adding that to every contract in the local um, that we negotiated after that, which made a huge difference in the community, um, and to you know, for to people not going back into prison. Is there anybody in the back?